Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Racha, Kodash, double honors to the apostle, elders of Great Millstone, peace and blessings to the whole flock. Uh, something I was meditating on, and I just wanted to do a, a short video on this. Uh, what I want to uh, share what I was meditating on was about the whole train derailments how there's a reoccurring theme with the train derailments and the reoccurring theme is not that they just keep happening or you know ever since the first one that happened in Palestine Ohio but every time these train derailments happen they always most of the time seem to be they seem to derail near a body of water and I was watching some of uh, Dabu 7's videos and I went back and watched them and he would always say how a train derailment happened near a water source or something and it just seems to be, like I was saying, a reoccurring th theme where they're always seeming, uh, these train derailments always seem to happen near a body of water. And the spirit had me meditating on that because I bring this out, uh, this precept out, this is 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. It says, lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. And Satan is not speaking about the spiritual demon, Satan. But spiritual, uh, Satan is speaking about, excuse me, Satan is speaking about a man. And that man that we're talking about is Esau Edom, the so-called white man. Specifically, the elites, the ones that are able to make things happen in society. <clears throat> and they're the ones that are causing all this chaos uh, right now that's happening upon the world. They are the wicked, uh, Job 9 and 24, the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. <laughs> And uh, something, uh, like I was saying, going back to what I was uh, meditating about with these uh, train derailments, the reoccurring theme seems to be like with most of them, I'm not saying all of them, but when I went back and watched the videos, most of them seem to always derail near a body of water. And I was, you know, spirit had me meditating about like how it's very, well, not funny, but for lack of a better word, it's funny how these things always derail near a water source and then they'll always say that in the video always oh the chemicals or whatever leaked into the water and things like that and what if you observe that it's like esau edom is polluting the waters the elites are having the waters polluted right so when the time of famine happens when there's a lack of water or uh, not just a lack of uh when there's a lack of food when there's a lack of water you can't go out into the world or like, let's say, a local pond or any body of water or source of water that you may live and drink water from there or get fish from there. You can't because how how can you if the water is polluted as well? How can you drink of the water or drink of uh, or eat the fish there if the fish are all dead and the water is polluted? You know, and that's like and that's Esau Edom, the elites boxing people into what to come to them for the want of all things. Because they want to set, us a, set up a society, a system, where you have to come to them. But in order to, uh, in order to, uh, you know, partake or get food and things like that, you have to be in the system, and that system is going to be set up by Revelation thirteen and sixteen. And I recently just bought uh, some. Some of you who may play video games may know it. It's a video game called The Last of Us, <coughs> right? And the first one, part one. Uh, I think within, I just recently got the uh, Last of Us remake for the PlayStation 5. And the, uh, I think it's within like the first five to ten minutes of the video game. You're playing as the main character, Joe, and you're walking with the, the secondary character or whatever. Her name's Tess. And as you're walking through the city and all that, <clears throat> you're going to a checkpoint, right, to go find a guy or whatever or something like that, right? <clears throat> it's been somewhat of a while since I played the game. <laughs> But as you're walking to a uh, to a checkpoint, right, and I believe they were going to get uh, rations, if I'm not mistaken, rations. Matter of fact, I'll even pull that up. I believe they were going to get rations, and right as they were going to get their rations, the uh, building, or like not the building, sorry, the checkpoint blew up. You could probably check it up on YouTube if you want, just to get a visual of what I'm uh, saying. You could just put in The Last of Us Walkthrough Part 1. And like I said, it's like within the first, maybe not even five to 10 minutes, because there's like a, a a playable part. But like, just watch like the first part or whatever, and you'll, you'll know what I'm talking about. But uh, 
that part where the checkpoint gets blown up by like, I believe they're a militia group called the Fireflies in the game. They blow up the uh, station. And the reason why I'm bringing up the ration part is because that's what Esau Edom is basically going to do. He's going to basically pollute the waters so where that way, what? You can't live off the land. You can't go to the water sources and get your own water. You can't uh, fish for water if you want it. How can you if the water's polluted? So then they could do what? Set up their ration system. But again, in order to get within that system, in order to get your rations, you have to get what Revelation uh, chapter 13 and verse 16, what John the Revelator saw, an implantable or subdermal device underneath the skin, the size of a grain of... Uh, the size of a grain of rice and it says for ration it says a fixed amount of a commodity officially allowed to each i'm sorry a fixed amount of a commodity which is going to be food officially allowed to each person during a time of shortage as as in wartime right so if all the ponds from these train derailments are polluted and you can't fish in them neither what what are they going to do? They're going to come, you know, they're going to have the solution. Hey, we have water. We have fresh, we have fresh food. We have fresh water that you can drink. But in order to do that, because we're in martial law, we're in wartime. Hey, you're going to have to, in order for you to get the water, we, we're, just, we're not just giving this out for free. You're going to have to take that subdermal device, <clears throat> Revelation 13, uh, Revelation chapter 13, verse 16, the MOTB, in order to, you know, uh, get the rations, in order to get the food, in order for you to get a, you know, a fixed amount, uh, a fixed amount of food to you. And it just had me uh, meditating upon that, going back to uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11, for we are not ignorant of Satan's devices. And when you go into that word devices, in Job, I believe, I forgot the word there in Job, that goes into their plan. But here I want to see what it says. It says an evil person, that which thinks the mind, thoughts, or purposes. So what is the what is the elite's plan? The elite's plan is what? To set up a system, a new, a new world order to what? Where you come to them for the want of everything. And not just us Israelites, but even their own people, everybody, so-called black people, so-called white people, so-called Chinese, so-called Arabian, everybody, right? That lives on the shores of America, that lives on the land of America, right? They want to set up a new world order, which is gonna be set up or, or uh which is going to be uh the prominent thing in order to get into that system which is going to be what john the revelator saw which is revelation 13 and 16. so in order for you to get that fixed amount for yourself you're going to have to get this subdermal device that's the size of a grain of rice put within you through a a through a needle either in the right hand or in the forehead or it could be anywhere in the body it doesn't matter right so that is their thoughts and by causing these train derailments right because the elites they're not driving the train when i say that they're causing these train derailments obviously they're not driving the trains themselves but what they're orchestrating by look i want you to drive this train because they have lesser illuminaries underneath them people that exact these things or what you would call think tanks okay how can we get the people or how can we set up a plan to where we want the people to come to us for everything well, okay, well, they have the lesser luminaries. Think of this. Just like a council with the Heavenly Father in the heavens that uh, you read about in uh, 1 Kings, the 22nd chapter. He wanted Ahab to die at Ramoth Gilead. Well, he had a council in the heaven. You know, the evil angels came and said, hey, on one said on this man, the other said on that matter. And one said, I will persuade him. How so? I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. Because we always say what? Esau Edom has a God complex, right? <clears throat> he wants to be like the Most High. <laughs> So what do they think when they have their think tanks? Figure out a way to cause the water to get polluted so that way what it's easier for everybody to come to our system. We'll look like the saviors, you know? We'll look like, oh, you know, all this trouble and everything is happening. You're in trouble. Look, come to us. We have fresh water. We have, we have food. But in order to get this, you have to get this, again, this subdermal device, right? And that is their devices. That is their plan. So that is what I mean when I say when... Uh, the elites cause these things to happen. They're not driving the trains, but what? They're telling people, the less luminous, hey, make sure that this train, you know, flatlines or, or derails in this area near a body of water and make sure that the chemicals also, you know, fall into the water, which is all through the Lord making that happen because the Lord uses uh, the both the left hand and the right, uh, and the right hand. 
uh, Isaiah 45 and 7, if I'm not mistaken, it says, I, the Lord, make peace. I create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. So at the end of the day, this goes really up to the top top, which is the Heavenly Father, because the Heavenly Father has a plan to set up his new world order. But just something I observed uh, when watching these videos, I went back to make sure not all of them, but most of them seem to have that same apparent thing, which is just they would derail near a body of water. And the same story would be, oh, the chemicals are falling into the water. If you go to Palestine, Ohio, it didn't uh, derail near a body of water. But when they lit the, uh, the chemicals on fire and that big black smoke went up into the air, I've even posted some videos. You can find it on TikTok. Uh, I'm not sure if they would have it on YouTube, if YouTube would up. Uh, uh, if YouTube has taken those videos down, but you even have it on uh, certain things like TikTok where uh, people are posting videos on TikTok where you could see like the chemicals in the water and there's fish also dead in the water as well. People have said they have been affected by the chemicals, their animals have been affected, that it's affected the, uh, the fish, the sea life in the ponds. So they knew what they were doing when they set up, the, uh, they lit those chemicals on fire. So it's the same thing with having these trains derail near bodies of water and then supposedly just, oh, by accident, the, the chemicals just leak out into the water and what, you're not doing anything about that? You don't care about the sea life in the water as well? But this is them which destroyeth the earth. <coughs> I'm just going to get one last precept. Yeah, there we go. Because uh, although all these things is happening, Lord's willing, we will be part of the elect, but the elect will be fed. The elect won't have to worry about, are they going to eat? Are they going to drink? Now, the elect will be uh, carried through the fire, yes, but which is going to be that uh, time of trouble, Jacob's trouble. But yet the Lord will preserve his elect and Lord's willing, we are accounted uh, for that number. So this is Psalm chapter uh, Psalm 33 and verse 16. It says, There is no king saved by the multitude of an host. A mighty man is not delivered by much strength. And horse is a vain thing for safety. Neither shall he deliver any by his great strength. Right? So a king is not delivered by how much men he has in his army or how much strength a, a man may have, you know. Or, you know, a horse, which also could represent power, is not is a vain thing that you could go to for safety, right? Verse 18, it says, Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him. So what? Fearing the Lord is what's going to keep you safe. Uh, is, that, is that 34 and 17? Or is it 37? I know it's, uh, let me see where it is. I know it's verse 17. Is it Psalm 37 or 17? Ah, why am I forgetting this now? Ah, uh, come on. How's it go? It's right there on the tip of the tongue. Salakia. Um, the angel of the Lord encampeth them that fear uh, fear the Lord. Salakia, roughly paraphrasing. But let me just go back to Psalm 33, if I'm not mistaken. What was it 34 hours up? Well, now I've completely lost where I was. I'm sorry. Damn, where was I now? Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, it was 33, Salakia. So going back to verse 18, it says, Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him, upon them that hope in his mercy, right? To deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine because the elites are causing famine. All right, not just only this thing, but also last year there was also a similar theme, which was the whole burning down of certain facilities and certain animals and livestock was being burnt in some of these facilities so they're causing famine why in order to you know take away uh, uh, so that way you can't go out there and look for food because when people go out in the streets 
uh, they're going to go to wherever they can find food and things like that. If they know a factory is full of food, you don't think people, if there's no food in the grocery stores, people in the time of trouble, especially if, if you have kids, will go to these factories wherever they are, no matter how far they may be, drive over there if they have to, and bust into these facilities and take up <laughs> take up them some ox, some uh, some sheep, some some what you call it, some chicken and all that, and ride off with it. And the elites don't want that. No, the elites want you to come to them. They don't want you to live off the land. They don't want you to live by themselves. They don't want you to be able to think you can do anything without them. <laughs> okay, government. Govern meaning rule and meant meaning mind, ruling the minds of the people. They want to have the people enslaved. <laughs> and they want you to look at look to them for the want of all things. So they have to what? Cut off all your options. So what? The only option you see is them. And that way you submit to what they want. Even if you don't want to do it, you have no other options. What's what's your other choice, buddy? What, you're going to let your family and your kids starve? You know, your wife's looking over there like, we need to eat. But this is where the spiritual man, this is where the elect are not going to be like that. They're going to have faith in the Heavenly Father. They're going to hope, as it says, to deliver their soul from death, to keep them alive in famine. Our soul waiteth. For the Lord, Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai, He is our help and our shield. Right, because you can't think that by your own strength, you going out there and <laughs> driving to a facility and saying, F this, I'm going to go steal some sheep or something, or some oxen and some, some chicken and then run, drive back to your crib and think that you're going to be good. No, your own strength, your own mind is not going to be able to deliver you. But having faith for the elect, having faith and hope and trust in the Heavenly Father is what's going to deliver them from the troubling times. It's what's going to save them and keep them preserved. Even if they don't eat, the Lord can pre still preserve them. It tells you that in the book of Sirach, uh, the Lord, now, if I'm not mistaken, the Lord knoweth how to deliver them out of temptation. And, and a lack of food, not eating, can be tempting because you, you know you, your body has to eat. You know you have to eat. That is a, a carnal thing. But what, and that could, you know, Satan starts plaguing the flesh and you start, what, that could lead you to tempt it. Like, hey, man, you got to eat. You got to, hey, maybe, maybe it won't be so bad if you take that thing. I'm like, nah. But again, like the scriptures say, the Lord know how to deliver, know how to live with the godly out of temptation. Uh, verse 21, it says, let me read 21, uh, 20 again. It says, our soul waiteth for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. For our heart, which is our mind, shall rejoice in him, because we have trusted in his holy name, which the name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh, and his son's name is Yahweh Shai. Let thy mercy, O Lord, be upon us, according as we hope in thee. Hope in the Lord. Matter of fact, let me get that really quickly. I'm not trying to make this long, but <clears throat> let me get this point here in uh... <clears throat> Sirach. This is uh, uh, Ecclesiasticus chapter 2 or Sirach chapter 2. It says, Ye that fear the Lord, wait for his mercy, and go not aside, lest ye fall. Ye that fear the Lord, believe him, and your reward shall not fail. Excuse me. Ye that fear the Lord, hope for good and for everlasting joy and mercy. Right? So you have to hope for the Lord's goodness. What's the Lord's goodness? That look, even though there's a famine, a lack of food... <laughs> You know that the Lord will have mercy. You know, and the uh, the Lord is uh, the scriptures say the Lord's mercy endureth forever. That the Lord is is not just a God of wrath, but He's a God of mercy as well. That He can have mercy upon you. He can have mercy upon your woman and kids, your family, your loved ones. <laughs> right? Hope for that. Because in this world, you know, this world teaches you to, you know, this is why a lot of our people get beaten down. Because why? There's there's nothing good in this world, so that's why they always. Not saying that people hope for bad, but that's why people have like that type of mindset where they uh, just always think about the bad, the bad, the bad that can uh, happen. And, you know, I sometimes um, uh, that sometimes happens to me because, you know, Jake lives a rough life and certain things happen in your uh, life that it's hard for you to ever see the light at the end of the tunnel, like they say. But the scriptures speak about hoping for that, uh, you know, everlasting mercy, hoping for that for that good. <laughs> And that's what the scriptures are. That scriptures are that comfort, that that hope. It says, uh, verse 10, it says, Look at the generations of old and see, did ever any trust in the Lord and was confounded? Now, this is a rhetorical question. 
Because when you read the scriptures, did anybody that ever trust in the Lord was confounded? Meaning like, did they ever like, I, I trust in the Lord and it didn't work out? No. Or did any abide in his fear and was forsaken? Did anybody fear the Lord and it just was like, oh, I feared the Lord for no reason? No. Everybody that anybody that feared the Lord, they were never forsaken. Daniel, Daniel feared the Lord. Was he forsaken when he went to the lion's den twice? Nope. The lions didn't touch him the first time. When you read in uh, uh, Bell and the Dragon, he was fed. The Lord sent Habakkuk to go feed him through the, uh, via an angel. <laughs> or whom did he ever despise that called upon him? Right, because the Lord knows if you're calling upon him, you must call upon me in sincerity and truth. See, if you're calling upon me, that means you truly fear me and that you're sincere and that you're, uh, you're calling upon me in sincerity and truth. And did he ever despise anybody that calls upon him? The Lord wants us to come to him. The Lord wants us to look to him. The same way Esau, Edom wants us to look to him, that's what the Heavenly Father wants us Israelites, so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native American Indians, to look to him for help. <laughs> scriptures say, woe unto them that go down to Egypt for help. Scriptures never said, woe unto them that go to the Heavenly Father for help. <laughs> Verse 11, it says, For the Lord is full of compassion and mercy, long-suffering and very pitiful, and forgive its sins and save it in time of affliction. So, yeah, so that was what's going to happen for the elect. Those that trust and wait upon the Lord, they are going to be preserved in the time of famine. They're going to be saved. Them, their loved ones, their family, if the Lord so chooses to have mercy. But just want to share that observation that I had. Just like I said, for lack of a better saying, it's very funny how that's a common theme that just keeps happening. These train derailments seem to, it's, you would think, hey, you know, one was bad enough. Why do these things keep happening? Then not all of them, but most of them keep having that, oh, well, the chemicals leak in the water. It's like, hmm, really? But, you know, just something to look out for if this does keep happening more and more and more. So pray this was edifying. As always, want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Racha, Kodash, Shalom.